On this channel, I talk a lot about how climate change is affecting us today and what could be in store for us tomorrow. But what about the past, the distant past, the past so far back that backbones were a recent invention? How has climate changed over all this time? And what does that tell us about climate change today? Because even going this far back, the fingerprints are still pointing to a familiar culprit. I'm Adam, a climate scientist with a PhD from Oxford, sharing what you need to know about climate change. And today I want to look into climate change's past. I've done this before, first looking 10,000, then a million years back. Well, that's nothing, because this video is going to peer half a billion years into our planet's history, so far back that trees weren't even around yet. I mean, even the planet's layout this far back was unrecognisable. I want to look at the climate shifts the planet's seen over all this time, and how they reveal what we're doing now is unprecedented. But I hear you cry. How do we know what the climate was up to hundreds of millions of years ago? Which is a great question. And the answer is in a groundbreaking study which applied cutting edge techniques. I've wanted to cover the study since it came out last September, and then other things in the climate's present kept happening. But now is not only the right time, I also have the right team. My pal Rachel Phillips, the iconic Geo Girl, is here to help break down the study. Hi Rachel. Hi, I'm Rachel, also known as Geo Girl here on YouTube, and I'm a geoscience professor and communicator. I actually got my PhD in paleoceanography, so how we use rocks to reconstruct ancient ocean chemistry and climate, and this paper is one of the coolest data sets I've seen in paleoclimate science. I can't think of anyone better to nerd out with over this paper, so make sure you subscribe to her channel. Oh, and subscribe here too while you're at it. You may also notice I don't sell you all stuff you don't need with ads or product placements. You can help me keep not selling you all stuff by becoming a patron up here. Now this study actually started because the Smithsonian was putting on an exhibition and wanted to show a record of Earth's ancient climate climate history. And then they realised that there wasn't really a very good one, and so researchers made one. And how tragically the study only looked back 485 million years, just 15 million years shy of the full half billion. I guess the researchers just kind of got bored and gave up. But even so, the data set still covers most of what we call the Phanerozoic Eon. And the researchers have called their result the Phanerozoic Time Evolving Averaged Surface Temperature Illustrative Curve, or fantastic. How cute is that? Extremely. But even going back just 485 million years, it's not like there were thermometers all over the world. I mean, thermometers have only existed for the last few hundred years, and we're looking at going back twice as far as the origin of the dinosaurs. So what do researchers use to measure these ancient temperatures? So paleoclimatologists, scientists studying Earth's ancient climate, use natural thermometers, what we call proxies chemical, biological, and physical signatures preserved in rocks that tell us about the temperatures in which they formed. And the authors of this study used several proxies from the oceans, things like oxygen isotope ratios preserved in fossil shells, and organic molecules like TEX-86. I have literally never heard of TEX-86 before. The point is that these proxies are all sensitive to the temperature of the water in which they formed, and they form in layers over time. So by Peering through these layers, it's almost like stepping into a time machine, allowing us to deduce the temperatures of ancient oceans millions and millions of years ago. Now, we're glossing over it, but working out temperatures from these natural logbooks isn't exactly straightforward. I mean, it's actually the opposite of straightforward. Squiggly backwards? Sure. It means compensating for samples degrading over vast amounts of time, the shifts of continents, and sediments being swallowed by the meeting points of Earth's crust. Just huge amounts of work to try to unpick what these records are showing us. But the researchers didn't stop there. 
they also simulated the Earth's climate over the same time period to try to get a more complete picture. Combining these simulations with the information from the proxies gives the best of both worlds, the most complete and accurate possible picture of Earth's climate changes over 485 million years. This technique of combining observations and simulations isn't actually new. It's called data assimilation and it's used all the time for weather forecasting. And while it has been used to peer into the past, this study breaks new ground by using it to look this far into our planet's history. Oh, and if you want to know more about how the researchers actually did this, we made a video all about that over on my channel, which will be linked at the end of this one. But now let's actually take a look at the temperature record in all its glory. Here it is. 485 million years of our planet's history. When I first saw this study, I was shocked because up until this point, we've had amazing records like the Zakos curve, but that only reconstructed temperatures in the last 66 million years. So to suddenly have this detailed picture going back almost half a billion years is mind-blowing. And these results aren't just impressive. Having this record unlocks our ability to understand what happened in our planet's past and what the impacts of this were. Overall, this new dataset confirms the broad patterns scientists had before, but it shows that temperatures varied even more than we'd previously understood. And by having one single record for this entire, almost half billion years, it allows us to more directly compare what was going on in different epochs. I mean, just look at the Ordovician. You could really see the drop in temperature as the world entered an ice age at the end of that period around 445 million years ago. And then we can contrast that to the rapid global warming that occurred at the end of the Permian period around 250 million years ago, which was part of the cause of the largest mass extinction. Then finally getting to something a little bit more recent in that timeline, we can see the rapid increase in temperature associated with the Paleocene-Eocene thermal maximum around 56 million years ago, which is often studied as an ancient analog to modern climate change. Now, here's the point where the commenters chime in with, this shows the climate's always changing, even long before humans were around, proving that we aren't causing climate change today. Actually, based on past videos, I'm pretty sure some commenters will write that before well, they've even made it past the intro. And like so much climate skepticism, it starts with a legit and legitimately interesting point. Yes, the climate has changed before, but that's not something climate scientists deny. In fact, it's climate scientists who work that out in the first place, and it's pretty fundamental to our understanding of the climate. But conservation of energy means the planet's temperature isn't going to just spontaneously change. Something is needed to change the climate. Now, given that the Industrial Revolution happened about 150 years ago, and all these changes took place over 485 million years, it's fair to say that the causes of the changes we see here weren't humans burning fossil fuels. The biggest temperature swings we see in this record line up with huge geological and biological events. For example, both plate tectonics and the evolution of land plants contributed to the rapid cooling and glaciation that occurred at the end of the Ordovician period. Then major volcanic activity caused the rapid global warming that occurred at the end of the Permian. Then 66 million years ago at the end of the Cretaceous period, a massive asteroid impact caused the temperature swings that ultimately wiped out the non-bird dinosaurs. Because we're here today, now, we can check whether any of those things could be behind the climate change we're seeing today. And surprise, surprise, they're not. But what is changing is carbon dioxide levels. CO2 acts as the insulator for the planet, and so adding to that insulator heats things up. This isn't new science. The basics of the greenhouse effect date back over 150 years. But our evidence supporting this idea dates back even further. In fact, now it dates back 485 million years. And although these climate changes over the past half a billion years weren't initiated or triggered by carbon dioxide, it did play a direct role. The triggers affected global climate 
because of their effect on the concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Plants take up CO2 causing cooling, volcanoes release CO2 causing warming, and asteroid impacts can also cause a massive release of CO2 and other greenhouse gases into the atmosphere if they hit and vaporize carbon rich rocks. So even though the triggers are different for all of these climate change events in Earth's past, CO2 is the common denominator. It is the one thing that consistently tracks with temperature changes throughout Earth's history. And don't just take our word for it. As the study itself says, there is a strong correlation between atmospheric carbon dioxide and temperature, identifying CO2 as the dominant control on variations in Phanerozoic global climate. So instead of these past changes disproving the evil climate science conspiracy, it actually just verifies that carbon dioxide plays a central role in controlling the planet's climate, and has done for half a billion years. And this isn't great news, given what we've been up to this past 150 odd years. In this time, which is a blink of an eye in geologic terms, we've raised CO2 levels higher than they've been for millions of years. And this rapid change in the makeup of our atmosphere is leading to massive temperature changes. As the lead author of the study, Emily Judd, puts it, when the environment warms that fast, animals and plants can't keep pace with it. In the same way as a massive asteroid hitting the Earth, what we're doing now is unprecedented. And when the researcher who just published our best ever record for half a billion years of our planet's history uses the word unprecedented, you know we're in trouble. And since we're pushing our planet into uncharted territory, having a record of our climate's distant past is incredibly valuable to help us understand what we could be in for. It can help us pin down how hot we can expect the world to get for certain amounts of emissions, and even give us insights into some of the impacts of today's heating. By 2100, temperatures could reach levels not seen in the last 5 million years. One of the best analogs for modern global warming is the Paleocene-Eocene Thermal Maximum, which occurred around 56 million years ago. Global temperatures rose about 5 to 8 degrees Celsius in just a few thousand years, which is extremely rapid on geologic time. This rapid shift caused widespread ocean acidification and declining ocean oxygen levels, leading to major extinctions among marine animals. But the craziest thing about this event, in my opinion, that I don't think a lot of people talk about is that it occurred in a period in which Earth was already hot and getting hotter. And that means that warming of the same intensity today would be even more devastating because modern life is adapted to cooler conditions. But the warming today is actually occurring even faster than it did during this PETM event over mere decades instead of millennia. And given how fast our climate is heating today, it's no surprise that both the human and natural worlds are already failing to adapt to the changes fast enough. But there's another difference between past climate changes and what's happening today, us. This difference, the fact that we are causing modern climate change, also means that we can do something about it. Never in the history of Earth has there been a single species that could comprehend the changing climate and deliberately extend its own survival. Now granted, can and will are different things, but I think just realizing this ability that we have can be incredibly empowering. We just have to choose to act. And that's part of why this study is so awesome. Not only are the methods behind it incredible, but it also provides us with this profound perspective of where things are at today. And if you want to know a ton more about how it was done and what it reveals, we've got that video over on my channel. That's over here. And make sure to subscribe to Rachel while you're there. Okay, until next time. Bye. bye. Not seen in the back. I don't know.